Hey everyone, it's Dre, and I'm back again with my Druid Warrior Sword. Um, in the last video, I ended with having finished up doing the actual modeling uh, after the video, of course. I finished extruding all of these uh, little, uh, I guess, branches, appendages, wood extrusions, whatever you would like to call them. Um, and I had also applied some materials to uh, the handle section as well as the blade. Um, now this video is going to be a little bit different. It's not going to be a time lapse. Uh, the, the footage that I recorded for the time lapse, I didn't really like the way it turned out. So I figured I'll just go through and talk about the things that I've done um, to get it uh, to the final point where it has, I, I've applied texturing to it, I've also applied a uh, bump map to it to give it more detail and talk about how I went about setting up the render and just all these different things. So how long this video is going to be I'm not sure, hopefully it doesn't take too long. So um, each of these separate objects, the handle and the blade, they have their own material. Over here for the blade you can see the little blade material, look at that. Um, ignore uh, ig ignore this right here, the, the greenish type stuff. Normally when it's just the material it would be this color, the whole ball would be that color with specularity which would be the, the highlight um, being this color. But because I have a texture applied to it, you're actually seeing the texture right now. It, it gives you a preview of the texture. Um, and so both the blade and the handle have that. See, there's a little texture preview for the handle. And you'll get to see that in a little bit. Um, and so I went through, I applied the materials. I fiddled around a lot with all of this just because. Uh, I'm new to Blender and it's fun actually to just fiddle around, change some settings, render it out, see the difference. Um, but you know that that's there's there's so much to go into with all of this. Just know that there's the material that you have to apply first to the object. And then once you have that applied, um, well, before I actually show you the texture, once you have the material applied, you pretty much have to make the UV map. And to make the UV map, you have to create these seams, these red lines that you're seeing. And over here on the left, UV mapping, uh, mark seam, unwrap. The way that you do it, you pretty much end up selecting these the edges between different vertices and you have to select the ones that you want this is how it's going to break up the the polygons into separate sections for your flat texture so I created all of these seams and of course I kept it symmetrical on both sides that way I could lay them on top of each other making it much easier than having to try and create the textures for this side and then match it up to this side and all of that type of stuff so once I created that seam, I unwrapped it. Now let me show you what that ends up creating. And just to show you, when you unwrap the UV, here are all the corresponding UV points. They, they all correspond to the vertices locations. So say if I select that one, notice I have that particular face selected. It shows it right here. Just like that one. So so on and so forth. That That's how it works out. You make this flat image. Um, and once you have this flat image, you actually end up exporting it. Same with the blade also. Notice how the blade's laid out. Very flat, very easy to work with in an image editor. So let me show you in Photoshop. When you save out the UV map from Blender, this is how it comes out. 
it is a PNG that has transparency to it, which makes it really easy to work with. Um, pretty much what I end up doing is creating another layer under it and I will start to paint with it on that layer that's underneath it. As you can see I used various brushes to get the underlying design for the blade. Uh, let me turn off the mesh. So here, you know, this is supposed to be like a leaf type design to it. And so I have the lighter section. I have the the, the fibrous look to it in order to convey leaf type material, you know. Um, and of course, having the mesh on top, I'm able to turn down the opacity on it and that allows me to see where I have things lining up and it makes it really easy to to make a good texture for the, for an object in Blender and of course once I get the UV map ready I save it out as its own file as its own PNG file and this is what this is the image that gets used for Blender and then I also go back and create a bump map rather than a normal map. A normal map, um, it's better to create that using a high definition model rather than trying to base it off of a flat texture. You can do that using a Photoshop plugin, but when I tried it, I didn't feel like the, resu the results were all that great. Uh, so I used the older style uh, bump map, which is just a grayscale image. Uh, darker area areas are lower, lighter areas areas are higher. So the vein section that you see here is going to be bumped up out of the actual leaf part. And then of course I did the same thing for the handle. So this is the layout of the handle and I made sure once I uh, created the UV map I had to make a lot of adjustments I had to move thing I had to, I had to move all these sections uh, the similar sections on top of each other or the same sections on top of each other the mirrored sections I guess I should say um, and then once I had them on top of each other I had to do a ton a ton of modifications to try and make sure that I don't have any of these faces being too terribly stretched which in this area where I have the extrusions I I really could not get it too well. Um, if you can see, these small faces are actually the ends of those extrusions. And uh, that section I'm probably least proud of just because it didn't turn out as good as the rest of the blade, but I, I'm kind of at a point where I think I've taken it as far as I really want to go with this. Um, and so here it is. This is the PSD file. And I work with layers. I work with a lot of layers. Um, I have the base color and I make sure it's something very different that I'm not going to be able to misconstrue it with what I'm working with. Um, and then the base, oh, well I have the background color and then the base color which is just the flat brown color for the wood. Let me go ahead and turn all of this stuff off. That way you can actually see what I'm doing and sort of how I worked with it. So yeah, I have the background color. I did the base. Um, I did some work using this layer here. Um, I don't believe I actually ended up using this layer. Here with dark bark and light bark, I was pretty much just adding um, randomness to it. I used a very grungy type brush that just scattered, you know, the coloring all over the place. I used different um, different types of lighting for it: uh, soft light for this one, uh, exclusion for this one. Here we have the highlights, so the bark gets lighter in these areas. Then the detail. This is where a lot of, I mean, this is the detail right here. I mean, the dark areas, um, I made sure to, here's the palette. These are the colors that I used. Let's get a little bit closer so you can see. So yeah, this is the type of detail that I went into with the wood. 
very random it's growing I wanted it to have like this growing look to it this nice grow this the growth I should say um, that's exactly what um, I wanted because pretty much this object causes the wood to kind of grow out and take the form um, of the handle area this isn't supposed to be carved this way it's supposed to actually just happen because that's how this magical little thing works right here anyways so yeah just wanted you guys to get a good idea of the type of detail that was put into um, the painting aspect of it and of course I used a variety of uh, brushes um, and this is just stuff that you have to experiment with really um, at one time I was gonna do something with like green glowing but um, I didn't really pan out I, d I didn't feel like I needed it oops so let's zoom back out so then of course this becomes the um, base texture the PNG file and then afterwards I go through and I create the bump map which pretty much this is just flattening the layers into another image and then um, um, pretty much getting rid of all the color and it, it ends up working very well just based upon the way that I, I went about adding the color to it because you see the highlights here adds you know th these areas are going to be pushed out with the bump map and then the darker areas so I didn't have to do a whole lot of tweaking after the fact with this and then like I said I tried to do the normal map but I didn't care for how it turned out once again this is the sort of thing normal map that it's better to use a high definition model to create the normal map which in blender currently I don't know how to do but I will be learning and then I'll probably make another video about doing that and so I save that out also and there you go so in the materials section pretty much for each object you have to add your materials to it um, and the way that it works is the first material in the list is the first one that's applied to the um, to the mesh to the UV I guess you should say that's why you want your color um, texture to be the last one added because that's going to be what's on top of everything else and so same thing for the handle you have your bump map, you have your color texture, and um, so as you can see in here for image, um, this is where you go in and you actually select your what images you want to use for them. Okay, and when you add when you add a texture normally it has something like um, it'll be like marble that automatically gets added to it and so you'll have to go in and specify that you want it to be an image or a movie um, see like right here when I hit new it automatically adds it as clouds and then you have to go in select image or movie and then you can go in and you can add um, the image that you want to it let me go ahead and delete that alright so now that I went over that let me go ahead and close this boom and then I can show you in the viewfinder this is what it looks like in the viewfinder with the textures added to it get in a little bit closer so you can see now of course in the in the viewfinder you can't see the normal or the bump mapping going on so you're just seeing the texturing and then, like I said down here it's a little bit rough because there's a lot of stretching of the texture compared to say up here which is very nice really good um, 
layout of the texturing. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that this turned out. Um, I think I, I really like how I went about creating it. So once you have all that in place, uh, as you can see over here on the uh, scene uh, hierarchy, I have multiple lights. Let me make those visible, so just so you can see. I have various lights all around the place. Um, this is a sun, so it's an overall uh, light source that casts in the entire scene. And then the rest are point lights that they have a limited amount of illumination. Uh, so they only light up so far. And that's just to add some diversity to uh, the way the shadows work on the blade once you render it out. And then, of course, I have my main camera which this is the one here let me go ahead and move that a little bit there we go All right. okay so I have that main camera and then I also have another camera that I was using to get a different perspective I wanted to get an up close shot just to analyze the way that it would render out um, and you can switch between those. So now that I have all that in place, uh, as well as the background. I have this large plane here to give a background. That way, as light is hitting the blade, it causes there to be a shadow behind it. And so let me go ahead and render it out. And you guys can see how it looks, finally. And so I'm going to go ahead and leave this rendering process in the video. That way, everybody can see. Um, how it goes about doing this render. And so it's pretty much just doing section by section, doing the calculations, the illuminations and everything. And I've actually exported this and imported it into Torque just to see how it looked. And it didn't seem like the bump mapping was working in Torque, but hey, I don't think I'm going to end up using Torque anyways. So here we have the final render. And as you can see, uh, with it being a bump map, um, you can see it has really nice detail to it. I, I think I did an alright job right here. Especially right here, and then for giving it a wood look, especially like this right here. This looks really rough, and I like that. I think it looks really cool. This, this could probably use more work, but whatever. Um, but yeah, this this is the final render. Um, a very, uh, I really like the way that Blender works. Using, I mean, my my the way that I'm doing all of this, I'm using Blender, I'm using uh, Sculptress, and I'm using Photoshop. And um, I mean, anyone can really do it. You just have to work and practice and create. Um, and the more you do it, the better you're gonna get. So. Uh, I really hope you guys liked seeing how I went about doing this. I hope you enjoyed um, the final product. I hope you think this looks cool. Uh, I know I do. So, Anyways, until next time, later.